pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now we do approval of the minutes. I got it way ahead of myself. It's all right. Approval of the regular session minutes of January 22nd of this year. <clears throat> I have reviewed them and find them acceptable for making a motion to approve the minutes of 122-2018. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. We have a consent agenda that was mailed to us on Friday. Is there any item that needs to be pulled for further discussion or can we approve the consent agenda as it is prepared? If, if we can do that, then while well, I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda from today, January 24th, 2018. Second. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Uh, skipping over to page 7, item 17, Board of County Commissioner's resolution to pay the bills, bills in the amount of $1,129,609.55. Do we have a motion to pass resolution 11-18? So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Next is Pam Haverkost. Hi. Hi, Pam. Um, Pam Haverkost, Claremont County Emergency Management Agency Director. Um, so item 18 is a recommendation of Pam Haverkost, Director of the Claremont County Emergency Management Agency with the concurrence of Thomas J. Igle, Interim County Administrator, to authorize the submittal of the FY15 State Homeland Security Program Special Project Funding Grant Application to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency, a division of the Ohio Department of Public Safety, in Columbus, Ohio, for the fiscal year 2015 State Homeland Security Program Special Projects Funding from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security for the acquisition and installation of equipment uh, for the project entitled Mobile and Portable Radios as more fully defined in the project budget in the amount of $49,999.99 for the prevention, protection, response, and recovery from a possible terrorism incident pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein and effective for the performance period through May 31st of 2018. And so what has happened is that they, uh, the state has changed how they manage the state homeland security funding and they have been allotting it to their regions. So we received FY15 state homeland security funds to our region, um, which is administered by Hamilton County. And as we get to the end of the grant performance period, uh, the state has excess funds, and so now they're opening it up for the individual counties to apply for funding, but they're very restrictive about what's eligible. So for our county, what we are eligible to apply for is for uh, mobile and portable radios and in-car repeaters. And so we reached out to all of our public safety agencies to see who needed equipment, and um, we got back information. We actually received a significant amount of request, but due to the very short time frame for us to be able to spend those funds, um, we have to keep it under the $50,000 purchasing threshold in order to make sure that we can um, cons use those funds before the grant closes. There's no opportunity for extension, so we have to have the equipment ordered in here by May 31st of 2018. So we just have a very short time frame. So what will happen is this is just an application Ohio AMA will review all the applications they get from the 88 counties and then they'll make an award announcement um, hopefully mid-February and then we'll get a notice of award with what we'll actually be receiving and then what we'll do is once we figure out the total amount we'll meet with all the partner agencies that submitted applications and determine how we're going to use the allotted funds and then come back to you with the final budget what we're going to spend so Pam in years past I guess we've had uh, similar situations where we've applied for excess funds no actually we, it had this is the first time that they're opening it up to us um, the last time so I think it was 2012 they used to award it to the individual counties and then we would have those funds 
and then they switch to making it a regional grant. This is the first time that they're opening it back up to individual counties to apply. Um, I foresee that this is going to become a standard process as they have excess funds because they don't want to return those funds to the federal government. And it's all competitive. So yeah, it is 100% funded. So there's no match, uh, no cost to the local jurisdictions. Uh, yeah, and it is competitive. So uh, the state anticipates we're looking at competing for $300,000 maybe. So they weren't even sure the last time I talked to them exactly how much money we're competing for. So you mentioned in your things that we might purchase repeaters. Are we are we thinking about repeaters because we don't use them in Claremont County at this time? It, no. So the state only was allowing um, like things that could be purchased immediately. Right. So the, what so we were just on the list of yeah. things that they so were there's allowed. only three items that we're eligible to submit for: um, mobile radios, portable radios, and the vehicle repeaters right. those are the only three things that we were eligible to apply for so we put all of those items out to our public safety agencies sure. no one asked for an in-car repeater they only asked for mobiles, mobiles and portables in those mobile radios that there people don't realize how expensive those really are yeah and i would assume those are probably motorola type type devices or something that's compatible yeah, yeah. so um Anything that we purchase will be compatible with the MARC system, mm -hmm. and the MARC's office out of Ohio, the Ohio MARC's office has put out what vendors can provide a product that works on their system. Um, the grant is very restrictive, so we have to um, make the purchasing competitive. So we'll be looking at all different types of products when we look at uh, purchasing. So when we get to that point, we'll be putting it out there, and all of the agencies have agreed to accept uh, any product that works on the mark system so good yeah. thank you we have a motion to authorize the submittal of the fiscal year 15 state homeland security program special project funding grant application as contained in item 18. so moved second mr Gubel. yes mr painter yes mr Humphrey. aye okay. thank you very much thank you thank you pam item 19. Good morning. I'm Suki Sheets with the Office of Management and Budget. Item 19 is one that's been quite a while getting here. Um, it's a recommendation to accept proposals for the electronic bill presentment, payment processing, and merchant services for water resources. Last summer, we went out for proposals. In September, on September 28th, we opened proposals. There were 10 that were received. So it took a while to get through the review of those. Uh, once we reviewed them and, and weighted them against the criteria that we had in the proposal. We narrowed it down to three that we brought in for demonstrations and, and uh, just further information gathering from them. Um, of those three, we have selected First Billing, who is a Ohio, they operate out of Ohio, which is one good thing. Uh, they will integrate with our utility billing software. They're not currently integrated, but they will integrate and pretty much make it real live data for our customers so they'll be able to go in see what their balances are see their historic bills um, process a payment schedule a payment enter banking information on on an outside website that would allow them to just then hit a button on their phone and, and make payments when bills are available to them um, so we're looking to start this up um, the proposals well currently the way that we have payments outside of writing your check, sending it to our lockbox, dropping it off, or bringing cash in is through official payments for credit cards and e-checks. Um, the official payments rate right now for a credit card is $3.45, and for a e-check, it's $2 per transaction. The fee that we're looking for, or that we have in this agreement with First Billing, is a 2% fee for credit cards, which equates to a, about a bill of $172 to make it um, equal to official payments fee. Well, our average residential bill is $50, $57. So it will be less on the credit card fees for the majority of the people. Uh, the e-check fee is $1.50, so there's a 50 cent savings there. Um, so the fee was very, very good compared to what we have. The benefits that we will get is that bill presentment. Um, and multiple payment options for the customers. So we are looking to accept the proposal from first billing. 
um, that was received on September 28th and to authorize the president to execute the master services agreement between the county and First Mobile Trust, who First Billing is a subsidiary of, um, for the fees as detailed in the Schedule A. And this will be effective for 36 months, but it will not start until First Billing launches their website through our website for our customers. So it's 36 months from that launch date. Um, and it's the, the fees that I mentioned are described. And if there's any other fees, if we have to go back after we launch this and do some programming, there'll be some other fees. And those are spelled out in the other attachment. And, and it will have an option for additional uh, renewals in it. So and we are doing a three year one because of the time it's going to take to get this set up. Um, we don't want to have to keep changing vendors and going through this process every year. So the e-check, they currently are doing two dollars, but they're going to lower it to a dollar fifty. It's a dollar. It's a dollar, or I'm sorry, it's two dollars with official payments. Mm -hmm. It'll be a dollar fifty with this new company. So it's it's one company versus another. Yeah, official payments will still be out there until we get rid of that countywide. But this will be another option for water resources people. So. We can't do e-checks for our property taxes. It'd be nice uh, for a flat fee. I mean, on credit cards. I don't want to do two percent of my, my. You don't want to do two percent of property taxes. Property taxes. Flat fee um, would be nice. We're we're going to look into that now. The other thing you can do, and I always tell all of my customers also, if you want to just electronically write your check for your payment of either your taxes or your water bill, a lot of banks provide that service for free. So, and and we have worked with the banks to uh, to pro get those payments electronically from them. Mm -hmm. So if you went to, say, you bank with Park National, um, if they have electronic bill payment for you, you can go to them, set up Claremont County Treasurer as a vendor, um, and go in there and schedule your payment to be made. Mm -hmm. They'll then send that file, take your payment from your account, send the information to whoever prints their checks, and ultimately it'll get here and we'll process it. So that's, that's always an option out there for our, our citizens, and a lot of them don't realize that it's, it's with their banks have it, and it's free. So, yeah, it's a good public service. So, yeah, they, they need mm -hmm. to look at their, at their bank options. Because for the I mean, it saves, even if they don't want to, um, they don't have a stamp. They don't want to write a check. It, it's a way to go. And it's yeah. safe. We get, we get the information. Usually within, I mean, it's less than a week. It really depends because they do batch them at the places that actually um, process the transactions for us. But, you know, we get it pretty cleanly. And Suki's work on this has brought the agencies of Claremont County all to the table to actually be able to review these proposals. And the ultimate goal there is to make it so that the business of Claremont County can be done by electronic um, payment whether that's credit card or debit card so that's the next step a right. little further down when a sale was what uh, sale. Commissioner Painter was was interested in and this one will allow for point of sale um, if we extend this vendor out to the rest of the counties they'll have credit card swipes or chip readers at the counter that they can walk up and make a payment so you know that that's still in the future but right now we'll get going on it uh, at water resources see how well it's received See if we can get people to sign up for electronic bills instead of us, you know, printing bills and mailing them to them. Um, so that's those are our goals, mm -hmm. and, and we'll see how well it goes. Here. It's been it's been a great you know it's been a great uh, adventure. And, it and it has been. It really has. Uh, there were a lot of people at the table for the three demos. Um, almost all of the departments that have over the counter type payments, so they have an idea of what the technology is out there um, and what the options are. So something like municipal court, would that be up to the clerk of courts? Yeah. So that's not up to us to... Okay. No. But but they they were in the meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. Barb was there, and she is she's all for uh, that. Municipal is what I was referring to, but I know they've got an issue with people paying bills. I thought that would be helpful. Yeah, they're actually... Yeah, municipal... Um, they had Ryan there, Ryan Robe, their ISD mm -hmm. guy, for yep. a couple of them. Yep. Um, Con please clerk was at these and very very like commissioner painter said very open to doing something better um not only for their court activity but as well for their auto title mm -hmm. so we will get there it just won't yeah. be today we'll be in a couple years we'll be accepting venmo right and, yeah and right. bitcoin 
So, yep. Just kidding. Okay. We won't be accepting Bitcoin anytime soon. So, right, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Do I have a motion to accept the proposal for ut utility bill payment, uh, payment processing and merchant services for the Claremont County Water Resource Department to execute the master service agreement and the rest of the information contained in 19. So moved. A second the motion. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Yes. Thank you. And I also have item 20, which is a supplemental this week. This is for the Common Pleas Probation Incentive Award Fund, or in general fund for the Common Pleas Probation Incentive Award, other expenses. It's an additional $50,000. This was a grant that we received last year. It was $104,000, I believe. They are going to now appropriate some of that and utilize that to help offset some general fund expenses. Hey, do we have a motion to resolve to approve and authorize changes to the annual appropriation? I'll make the motion. Second. Mr. Yubel. Yes. Mr. Payne. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Suki. And what would Humphrey, you like to um, do next? Based on time, I would suggest that we um, only enter into executive session for G1. Okay. And then when we come out of executive session, depending upon time, we can determine whether or not the board wants to take a recess till later in the afternoon Okay. to conclude the business. So we have a need for executive session pursuant to 121-22 G1 to consider the appointment, employment, and compensation of one or more public employees. Do we have a motion to that effect? So moved. I'll second, second the motion. Painter? Yes. Mr. Hubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. We'll be in executive session and back in a little bit. We're back from executive session. No votes were taken. No decisions were made. Uh, that was only on G1. Consider the appointment employment. Uh, we're going to probably go into executive session later for uh, two and three that, that we mentioned earlier. I'd like to propose that we recess until 3 o'clock um, and reconvene with executive session and the staff discussion and any public participation we might have and any, anything else that might come before the board. Yes, sir. Okay. So do we have a motion to recess until 3 o'clock? So moved to recess until 3 o'clock. I'll second the motion. Painter? Yes. Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. That concludes this portion of our business. We'll be back. <coughs> We're reconvening from recess at 3 o'clock or a little thereafter. And uh, we have staff discussion and we also have an executive session to go back into, Mr. Yes, sir. We'll go I go, into, what would you like to do first? Go into executive session on our G2 and G3. Okay. Then we have a need to go into executive session under G2 and G3, 121, 22, G1 and, and G3, I'm sorry, G2 and G3, to consider the purchase of property for public purpose and the sale of property at competitive bidding or the sale of other or other disposition of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit for use property. And three is to confer with the prosecuting attorney regarding pending or imminent litigation respectively. Do we have a motion to go into an executive session under two and three? So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. We'll be back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're back from executive session. No decisions were made. No votes were taken. Uh, we considered two and three. And we have a staff discussion with yes, Andy sir. Kuchta, is that yes, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So we don't have anything else? No other staff discussion, sir. And no other items on our agenda? And there's no public participation because there's no public here. Okay. Andy, so do we? I'm sorry, just a quick question, Andy. But um, if I understand it, stand it correctly, but the FBO contract that's in place now was signed 20 years ago? It or is it every 10 years? agreement that had 10-year um, 78, 
88, 98. So uh, decades. Okay. So do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll say it. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Hubel? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Yes. I. It is 452. <laughs>